Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look and see what the amplitude will be of a particle that actually makes it through one of these barriers. And of course that depends on the energy of the particle and the potential of the barrier as well as the width of the barrier. But what we're trying to do here is calculate the amplitude of the oscillations of the particle in region 3 after it passed through the barrier in comparison to the amplitude of the particle in region 1. So if we take a look at the equations here, the Schrodinger equation that describe the two regions, in region 1 of course we have two terms because we could have some particles that will be reflected from the barrier and move in the opposite direction. That will give us this term right here, but this term here represents all the particles moving from left to right. And in region 3 there's only one term because there's nothing on the other side of the barrier to make the particles reflect. So particles, once they make it through the barrier, will only travel in one direction from left to right. A here that represents the amplitude of the oscillations of the particles in region 1 moving from left to right and F here represents the amplitude of the particles in region 3 moving from left to right and we want to find the amplitude of F relative to the amplitude of A. The transmission coefficient is equal to the ratio of the square of the amplitude in region 3 divided by the square of the amplitude in region 1 which therefore means that the amplitude of the oscillations in region 3 is equal to the square root of t times the amplitude of the oscillations in region 1. If we now try to find out what that transmission coefficient is, it's defined by this equation right here. Now we haven't shown you where this equation comes from, we'll do that in a later video. Right now we just want to start with, here's the equation. It's 1 divided by 1 plus the hyperbolic sine of alpha times L. Remember alpha is this defined right here and L would be the width of the barrier divided by 4 times the ratio of the energy of the particle divided by the potential of the barrier times the quantity 1 minus the ratio of the energy of the particle times the, uh, divided by the momentum of the, uh, not the momentum but the potential of the barrier. Now if alpha times L becomes large relative to 1, if that becomes much larger than 1, let's say 5 or 10 or something like that, which would be considered very large compared to 1, then this equation simplifies to the equation over here, so that the transmission coefficient is simply approximately equal to 16 times the ratio of the energy of the particle divided by the potential of the barrier times 1 minus E over V, times e to the minus 2 alpha L. Notice that the transmission coefficient decays exponentially as L becomes larger and larger and larger. A smaller transmission coefficient simply means a smaller amplitude on the other side of the barrier, which of course makes sense. Again, alpha is defined by this right here, and L is simply the width of the barrier. So we're going to show you some examples of how that actually works, how to calculate these values. We're going to show you the difference between these two and when it makes sense to use the simplified version versus this. And also we'll show you how to derive this equation from here, making this assumption as well. But at least now you have some equations you can start working with. You should be able to plug in some values given an E and a V, for example, given a a certain energy for the particle, and a certain potential for the barrier, and the width of the barrier, you should be able to calculate what the amplitude on the other side of the barrier will be relative to the amplitude in region 1. And so that's where we start. I'll show you some more details of where these equations actually came from in the videos to come.